And I see a red flashing button. All right, so that one works. All right, we're going to continue in our studies on women in the Bible. And last week we had talked about Elizabeth and Mary. And we're going to continue uh, along with that probably next week, Lord willing, as well on that. Uh, we'll be talking mostly about Mary uh, this evening. So let's pray and then we can get right into that lesson. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, and place, Father, where we can come and gather together, Lord, to hear the preaching and teaching of your word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've provided for us, Lord, the uh, building. Lord, the comfortable uh, seating that we have, Lord, uh, the amenities, Lord, that are here, and also, Father, the ability to record, Lord, these messages and then put them out, Lord, over the internet uh, for others to avail themselves, Lord, of these teaching and preaching lessons. Father, bless us, Lord, as we look now into your word, and we ask this in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 2 is where we'll be spending a lot of the time in the lesson. Luke chapter 2. So we want to read the first five verses here. And here the scripture says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now, Mary and Joseph uh, are married, uh, and just before she is due, they have to take the trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem to pay the Roman taxes. Uh, it's quite a trip, as uh, Nazareth is up in the north of Israel by the Sea of Galilee, and they have to travel down south, uh, not all the way to the southern end, but quite a ways down south there, uh, to uh, Bethlehem, which is south of Jerusalem. Uh, they would have been going anyway. This is a convenience, and we'll talk about that uh, later uh, in this. But he has to go to the city where his lineage is from. And so because he's of the household of David, he has to go to the city of uh, Bethlehem in order to pay those taxes. Now the tax is being collected uh, by the Romans, is being collected on everyone who is not a Roman citizen. Okay, if you go to the book of Acts, chapter 22, we'll give you an example here. Acts 22, uh, Romans 24 through 28. This is where Paul uh, has returned to Jerusalem and uh, the city's in an uproar and he's uh, being arrested uh, and so forth. If we pick it up at 24 and read to 28, it says, And the chief captain commanded him, so uh, it's the Roman captain, and the hymn is Paul, to be brought into the castle, and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. You know, I mean, there's that, okay, well, we're going to beat you and scourge you to find out why they're upset at you, you know. Okay, uh, and as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? See, if you're a Roman citizen, there are laws that uh, protect you. Uh, you have certain rights as a citizen. 
And when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? And he said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was freeborn. Paul's family had been Roman citizens, and so because of that, when Paul was born, he was automatically a citizen of the Empire of Rome. This chief captain, for example, uh, had probably been one of the peoples that were being controlled by the Roman Empire, and he probably joined the Roman military. Uh, because after, you know, I forget it is like 30 years service or something in the Roman military, you could purchase citizenship into the empire. Not everybody that was under the control of the Roman Empire was a citizen of the empire. That's why Paul says, I was freeborn. Now, uh, Mary and Joseph, though, are not uh, so fortunate, okay? They are not citizens of the empire under which they live. And so they have to pay a tax uh, there for being aliens, as it were, within the empire. Um, they had no choice. They had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem in order to be counted and to be taxed. That's why it says back there in Luke, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So they're going to be two people in that household, you know, and so they're going to be taxed accordingly. Now, go to verse 6 through 7, and we have, and so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. So while there in Bethlehem, Mary gives birth to Jesus. All right, so we want to go through uh, this as we've done in the past here to settle the time frame because this is important. Elizabeth gets pregnant in January. Okay, we'll use Roman calendar here because it's easier to to figure this, but Elizabeth gets pregnant in January. Six months later, okay, Mary, okay, is visited by Gabriel, and she is becomes pregnant through the Holy Spirit of God. That would be July, all right, at that point. So January, so we got February, March, April, May, June, July, all right. Uh, okay, so nine months. Pregnancy, nine months later, is going to be October. Okay. In October, you have July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, I got the wrong date here somehow. <laughs> Let me back it up here. I'm counting from the wrong spot. January, six months. All right, I got to go back and look at my, my own coming up. Best up here. Should be October. Or your timeline. Yeah. July, June, May. I don't know why I've got it messed up. All right. But uh, yeah, I messed it up. I have to go back here. I've got Elizabeth in the wrong spot. All right. But, anyways, it ends up being October. Okay. I've got Elizabeth, is what I've got wrong here. My on that one. The important part here is this is the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, uh, They would have gone up to this feast anyways there in Jerusalem. So no doubt he would have gone to Bethlehem. It's going to bug me now. I'm sitting here trying to run this. Okay, what did I write down wrong here? That's what happens when you're doing stuff here. Half asleep and not paying attention. And you write things down. Uh, but it goes back to Luke chapter 1 where we get where Zacharias uh, runs his course and when his course is. And if we follow that all out uh, as far as that time framing on all of that, we end up in October. 
And again, Feast of the Tabernacles, and that's very important uh, that uh, it occurs at the Feast of the Tabernacles is when Jesus Christ is born. Now, you'll also note here it says that Jesus is Mary's firstborn son, not her only son. Okay? In fact, uh, he is not her only child, uh, as she is going to, uh, and Joseph are going to have several children. So contrary to what the Church of Rome teaches, the scripture is actually full of verses that uh, confirm that point. Let's start over in Matthew 15:40. That can't work. Let's see, Matthew or Mark? 139. Well, I'm not having a good night tonight. Right. Wow. Let me check. Okay. Mark. I bet you it was supposed to be Mark. Mark 15. Yeah, Mark 1540. And also 161. Fifteen forty. There was also women looking on afar off among them, whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Joseph and Salome. Okay, the second Mary is Jesus' mother, Mary. Or sixteen one. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. All right, now we're going to Matthew 13, we hope. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put this on the internet now. <laughs> of course I will. Uh, Matthew 13, 55 and 56. Uh, this is after Christ has announced himself uh, as being the Messiah. Uh, and they say, is not this the carpenter's son, and is not his mother called Mary, and his brother James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas. And you got four brothers right there. And his sister, so there's at least two, one of whom is named Salome. Are they not all with us? Went then has this man all these things. Go back to Mark chapter 6. Mark 6, verse 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So we've got it in both of those. Gospels there. John chapter 7. Verse 5. This is uh, asking if Christ if he's going up to the feast. The feast of the tabernacles. Okay, which is his, was, is his birthday. Okay. Uh, I pick it up verse 3 and his brethren therefore said unto him depart hence and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest his brethren so it's multiple for there is no man that doeth anything in secret and he himself seeketh to be known openly if thou doest these things show thyself to the world for neither did his brethren believe in him okay so another verse confirming that he has siblings Galatians 1.19 Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. But uh, other of the apostles saw I none, okay, save James, the Lord's brother. This is not the James who was uh, one of the twelve, because he was already dead. This is when Paul goes up to Jerusalem uh, to uh, 
I'll fight against the heresy that's being taught that uh, the Gentile converts need to get baptized and keep the law. The James that he is uh, seeing there and speaking to there is the half-brother of Jesus. Yeah. Now, we don't know how many in total children that Mary and Joseph had. We, we know of four sons, and we know that there's at least two daughters, one of whom is named Salome. Uh, but the scripture doesn't give us a definite number, but we know that there were both boys and girls born to them, at least another six children that they had before Joseph passed away. Now, we're back in Luke, chapter 2. What the Church of Rome has always counted on is people's ignorance of the Scriptures. And that's how they can push the false doctrine, why they can push the lies and the heresies, because they count on people being ignorant of the Word of God. Back in Luke chapter 2, verse 22 through 24, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now I believe that Jesus Christ was born on the first day of the uh, Feast of the Tabernacles and that he is the eighth day which is the high day uh, of that feast is when he is taken to the temple there uh, to be circumcised and Mary goes and offers her sin offering. This is another lie that <coughs> the Church of Rome pushes is that Mary was sinless. Well, if she was sinless, then she wouldn't need to bring a required sacrifice uh, for her purification, you know, in accordance with the law of Moses. You know, so, I mean, they teach that she was a perpetual virgin, never had any children. Well, the Bible says otherwise. Okay? Uh, they, you know, teach that she, you know, was a sinless human being. And the Bible says differently uh, in regards to that. You know, it's why for centuries they forbade the laity to be able to see and own and read and know the scriptures. They didn't want, because they're going to learn the truth. And they don't want them to know the truth because they then lose the power over them. You know, but Mary, as a faithful, God-fearing Jewess, uh, is doing this to maintain her righteousness. Okay? In the Old Testament times, during the law of Moses, it was faith and works. In order to maintain her righteousness, she had to do this in order to be righteous before God. Yeah. Now, if we go to Matthew... Come to the next step here in relation to Mary, uh, her story, which is Matthew 2, verses 13 through 15. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. I'm talking there about the three wise men that come to see Jesus when he's a toddler. Uh, on the day he was born. Uh, it came to Joseph in a dream saying, Arise and take the young child, okay, not the infant, not the baby, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And he arose and took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. 
So God warns Joseph to take Mary and the young child Jesus and to flee into Egypt uh, and he has him do this because Herod is looking for the Christ in order to murder him. Okay? He's been looking for him ever since he heard from the three wise men uh, about him. Now, this is a period of about three years after the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, they had been raising him and doing what, you know, everything that they were supposed to be doing uh, with him. It appears from what's said here that they actually stayed in Bethlehem. Okay, which again is important. Not only was he born uh, you know, of the house of David, uh, he was born in the city of David and was a resident there in the city of David. That's important again to his claim to the throne. Uh, but he flees into Egypt with him. Yeah, and if we pick it up at verse 16 through 18, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. I'm sorry, two years, not three years, my mistake. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Horrible thing. Can you imagine how Mary and Joseph must have felt when they discovered what happened back then? I mean, number one, they just narrowly escaped having Jesus murdered. But Herod, in his insanity, has every child from two years and under killed, trying to make sure that this king uh, is not alive. You know, and you know the the thing is here is. You know, if you go to Jeremiah 31, 15, that's where that verse is found. And they're talking about it. It's prophetic. Now, Mary and Joseph know the scriptures. Uh, I'm sure that they're aware of all the prophecies that concerning, you know, the birth of the Messiah and the prophecies concerning... Uh, you know, his millennial reign. Of, but I don't think anybody had connected Jeremiah 3115 with the birth of the Messiah until that event. And I mean, you know, to know that this was prophesied 500 years before the event by God, God that this is going to happen. This is what happened, and this is why it happened. You know, I don't think anybody knew that until that event occurred. And so, I mean, this has got to suddenly open their eyes to the Word of God and give it even more meaning because it's like, well, what other things are here in the scriptures that are prophetic? of Jesus Christ. And of course, a lot of these things would occur during his three and a half year ministry that they were able to go, yeah, there, here it is, here it is, here it is, here, all the way, you know, and just be able to, and of course, this is why the 500 plus witnesses to Jesus Christ's resurrection, okay, which would have included his mother Mary would have included his brothers and sisters along with the, the uh, apostles and uh, other disciples were able why so many Jews were trusting in Christ at that point in time because number one it's 
this just happened and they're able to take the scriptures and say look look at this here it is in the word of god yeah and that's why so many because they were already looking for their coming messiah they were already looking for these things these faithful jews and you know when they start seeing all these things being fulfilled no question in their mind you know uh, many of them had seen had been around and seen some of these things or you know they had listened to first-hand witnesses to uh, things that had happened during Jesus three and a half year ministry <coughs> here on the earth you know again Jews are looking for signs okay signs are for the Jews you know and so that's why you had this huge uh, number of I mean one day they have like 3,000 uh, get saved uh, you know and you know that's the thing it's all because of what's recorded in the Word of God and that's what's so important here is the fact that if you know the scriptures you can take the scriptures and you can show things to people you know that they get happened here it is and you can show them fulfilled prophecy one after another after another after another after another things that are happening right now that are fulfillment of prophecy and the point is if all of those prophecies hundreds and hundreds of prophecies have come to pass exactly as God said they would exactly when and how he said they would happen then the ones that haven't come to pass yet are going to and they need to take heed to that I mean what a, a, a cause of, of sorrow and grief though that must have been uh, I mean of course joy that obviously that their baby well my baby like I say the toddler at this time hadn't been murdered by Herod but you know all these children that were you know, wasn't it Ramah there was a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning Rachel Rachel buried in Bethlehem weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not who, who would have read that prior to this and said, oh, that has to do with the Messiah. No idea. No idea. And that's why I say that about the Bible, we have to realize not everything in the Word of God is written to us. I mean, uh, we've been reading recently in, in the prophets, we've been in Isaiah, you know, and some of the stuff, I'll, I'll tell you right up front, I read some of that stuff and it's like, I have no idea what they're talking about. But something will happen somewhere along the line in the tribulation that's going to open up <laughs> that scripture to the tribulation Jew and let him see some truth that he needs to see there. All right, let's go on uh, back to Luke 2, verse 41. <laughs> All right, here we have... So the next thing that we know about uh, which is when they go to the feast when Jesus is 12 years old they're going up to the Passover feast verse 41 now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover okay and I mean we know the story they go there uh, you know there are a great number of people families but they're kids uh, they go it's a feast they do what they're supposed to do they're on their way heading home they, they go a full day's journey away and that night they can't find Jesus nobody's seeing him they were assuming he was with <coughs> one of the other families off with the kids whatever no they don't worry about it you know it hasn't been a problem you know uh, they didn't have an issue with free-range kids <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course they can't find them so they're worried you know so they head back and after three days uh, they find him where is he he's in the temple sitting in the temple uh, with the, the priests and the doctors of the law and the Pharisees and you know he's asking them questions and getting answers he's 
you know, being asked questions and he's giving them answers, uh, you know, which is uh, verse 48 through 51. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, she was not happy. <laughs> Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that thou sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Yeah. Uh, you know, he's become aware of who he is. Yeah. And he's done this in innocence. He's not being a smart aleck here, but, uh, you know, this is going to be one of those go cut yourself a switch scenarios <laughs> kind of a thing. Okay, and they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. Okay, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Now, yet they know who he is. They understand who he is, Joseph and Mary. Uh, I mean, they have raised him from birth, the Son of God. I mean, that's just an, an incredible thing. <laughs> uh, can't imagine, you know, with the realization of who that is that you're raising. But, like any child, okay, he needs to be taught. You know, and sometimes he has to be taught through chastening. <laughs> you know, and I am no doubt in my mind that uh, there was some chastening involved here with this. You know? I mean, I remember coming home late from school one time when I was in like second grade or something, you know, when the leather belt came out. You know? So after three days, and my mother probably would have beat me to death with a log or something. You know? <laughs> All right, John chapter 2. Verse 1, we have the intervening years. 